Now, just just look at her work. Don't look at her because she's really pretty. Look at her work. Yes. I'm going to turn purple. Okay. This is I'm going to tell you a little about myself, guys. Um, I'm self-taught primarily. I uh, started doing this as a child, growing up in a very isolated area. So my friends are far away, and I would get bored, and I'd come home and um, try piano lessons. And my teacher yelled at me, saying I was playing by ear. So I got so discouraged, I never touched piano again, my favorite oh. instrument. Then it went on to um, play a little watercolor set, and I liked it. And then I went to junior high, maybe third grade, nine years old, ten years old, that time. Uh, There's a woman by the name of Susan Stuber. I don't know if any of you may have known her. She used to be called Miss Camilleri. She was my watercolor art teacher when I was nine years old. She inspired me. And uh, she was the woman that actually let me go and start with watercolor painting. Um, went through some life challenges, picked it up, put it down for years, picked it up, put it down for years. Um, about maybe 15 years ago, I picked it up again. And um, funny thing happened. I was uh, involved going through a life change met Sierra Club, and they said, hey, we're having this big, huge wine, organic wine tasting. I said, well, for a good cause, how about I donate a piece of my artwork? They said, better yet, why don't you have an art show with us? And uh, that's how I started. Uh, Stony Brook College in Southampton, and I met wonderful, wonderful artists, and that's how I was recognized to become an artist for Long Island. So if you guys have any questions, or if you have any stories you guys want to share about among yourselves, who here paints watercolor? Okay. Okay. You do. I try. Who here paints everything else but watercolor? Okay. Photography? Big sport. All right. Photography? I don't know if you can cover well, the way I look at that watercolor is a little bit how a photographer will look through his lens. And that being said is watercolor, I think, in my world, is paint backwards, layering process. So today I'm going to show you uh, what I do with layering with one color and the same paint and water pigment ratio in the background, such as that little piece there. So I'm going to work on a, a foggy, misty little river piece to show you guys. Anybody have any questions? What size, uh, what pound paper? For tonight, I usually use a block or 140, but tonight I'm going to work a little wet. I have my hair dryer, but I'm using a 300 pound. I took a sheet and I just quartered it up. Okay. And I already put a light sketch on here just to expedite the process for this evening. All right, so wet on wet. I do wet, but this is going to be wet, dry, wet, dry process, and then I put the details up. I'm a total beginner this way. So, at questions, feel free. If you guys want to come up, take a look at what I'm doing. If you all stop, you can come up, take a closer look. That's fine. I took a watercolor class, and we wet the paper and, and spread it out on a uh, board mm -hmm. and worked with it on the board. Mm -hmm. But when I tried it at home, the paper got all bumped. You know, it was like. This is arches, by the no, way. This is arches, 300 pound rough. I prefer the rough. I like the tooth. And it, um, I'm not a fan of hot press, although you get some wonderful portraits of hot, hot press. Okay. You know what? I work so well on blocks, even my blocks buckle up sometimes. Because it's a one, it's a 140 pounds. If you had a 300 pound block, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, I don't know it's like a, it's a, it's like it's a, a book with, with pants on. Okay. You get off just the best. It's, it's a block. Now, they start taking pants around to be like three sides. And that's something started here. That's not every day. It's passing around. And the peel is off. Yeah, yeah. 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 You gotta use a razor. I'm gonna start tonight's painting with I, I, my staple colors: French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and yellow. I can actually make paintings and paintings among paintings with just those three colors. And I'm gonna 
going to show you which I'm going to do this yeah. what I mean by that. That's so, yeah. Yeah. French ultramarine blue. I'm going to make a nice big wash because this is what I'm going to be using for the start and into the middle of my painting. Mm -hmm. Nice clean flat palette. Mm -hmm. Nice clean palette. Mm -hmm. Well, not really. <laughs> I cleaned it up to get here. No, it's pretty dirty. Right. So, so these colors make, you know, you can make a, a, a brown gray, a blue gray, and French ultramarine, and these two actually behave in a way where they can be grainy. Okay. And what color are you using? I'm using the two colors, uh, French ultramarine and burnt sienna. That's nice. And depending on the brand, every brand acts a little different. What brand I use? Okay. I've been using um, my Staples. Arches, paper, with the Newton watercolors. Holbein's good, Daniel Smith is good. I just stick with what I know because it works for me. Yeah, I can feel the texture. In this case, I'm going to put a lot of water. Very, 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 very light. Wash. Oh, Very light. Want to see? Maybe a gradual wash. I think I want to get. I might have guessed. Getting <coughs> some water there, so we push that around. Again, I work wet, so I'll be using the hair dryer intermittently. And then we have some water area here. And you take, you want to push the paint. You want to push the water. You really don't want to keep going over the same spot when you do this. And this is going to create the background. And I will dry this expedite tonight. Also, hair dryer. If you guys overwork something or it's drying too quickly, you can prevent blooms if you get the hair dryer on it quickly and you can save the paint if you feel it's going to go in that direction. It doesn't reach When the paper is drawing, you can see if there's shine to it, if there's still a sheen. Sometimes you know when to put it in, wet and wet. That's right. Do you want to keep behind the table the whole time? Yeah, <laughs> colors that you used? I only used two. I used a burnt sienna and French ultramarine to make my grapes. Ultra French ultramarine. Okay. And burnt sienna. Yeah. 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 I'm using a Misty Gray. I'm using a Misty Gray. Yeah. Those, yeah. And those, those two colors I find a staple because they make beautiful grapes. You can brown them, you can yeah. blue them. It's just, yeah, I have. Otherwise, you can use um, Windsor Blue with Lizard and Crimson and uh, Burnt Umber. I haven't seen Windsor Blue in one color. I've okay. seen it in acrylics and not more. Oh, I have it. You have it? Yeah. Who makes it? I have it from Windsor Newton. Windsor Newton, Newton. <laughs> Newton Green Shade. Windsor Blue is Windsor Newton Green Shade. He's got a green shade and a red shade. I use the question. Which one do you like? Uh, Daniel Smith. That's a good one. The other one. Uh, yep. I can't think of his name right now. It comes to me when I leave. Da Vinci? Yeah, that's it. You, you must be a clear point if you read my head. Uh, no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's see. I have a small brush for a big paper, so I'm just gonna. Can you see? I see. Is that better? You guys can see? Is your reference <laughs> from uh, life? Did you take pictures? Or? No, I was playing around one day. On this particular one, I, just was, I have a couple pieces that I worked and I was practicing my own 
I've done it with different colors. Like I've done it in a blue. Again, I just playing around. Oh, Adding different. I was doing opposite colors, like the orange and blues. So you can do any color you want. You want to make it green, yellow, blue, whatever color you like. I'm just using it in gray to make a nice misty appeal. The fact that I really like the way these they, these colors together also granulate. If you want to come up, you can see what granulation is on the paper. If you're interested. I'm almost getting hungry. <laughs> what? You getting hungry? You eat a treat? Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, granulation, I'm thinking of uh, Parmesan cheese. <laughs> 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 All right. So it's going to be, be, be the Italian then. <laughs> Italian fall. <laughs> Not London fall, Italian fall. All right, so, all right, so it's a little, a little creaking, you know, maybe in Venice. Yeah. Now, I like about this. I'm using a, a brush. You didn't sketch any of this. I sketched where the rocks are going to be, very lightly. Just so I have my horizon line to keep my balance for this. So I don't want to. Again, I'm just going to go with some water, soften those edges up. What I could do, or I did before, Aurelian yellow and Hooker's green make beautiful. Aurelian yellow is one of the best colors to mix to make green. And I'm going to use to make a little springy color down here. Some aggressive area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here, so another kind of Okay. Miss, uh, Miss 
Mark teacher. She wants to see the Sally. Call me Sally. Sally. Well, this, this is the two colors. This is just two. This is a wash I did with the same color, but it, it's how it behaves. And it, it's how the paint behaves. You could use a different way, you might not get that. <laughs> I work wet. This would be buckling up if I had the 140. Do you ever use gum arabic? I have. 
um, in a floral painting that I did years ago. And I did, I used a uh, mask, masking fluid for some daisies, masked out my daisies, put a wash in, and then I wanted it really soft, and I used, I got the uh, gum arabic I added to the next wash, a little bit more pigment to make my uh, middles, and it, so it, it retards the spread. Or you can just wait until the paper dries that to the perfect time and put it in if you have that timing. Other than that, the gum arabic will help. Ox gall with the sizing of the paper. You got cheap paper. You can put some ox gall on the paper, let it dry as a wash, or you can mix it in with your or your water. And what does it do? If, if the sizing of the paper is bug bubbling up, like you can't, the paint's not absorbing into it, okay. an ox gall kind of helps the sizing of paper that's cheaper or paper that's maybe sitting too long. Maybe put some coloration on the paper. Yeah, well, the, all the all the watercolor paper has uh, it's cotton and it has a sizing like a gel. I think it's a gel. It's got a I don't know exactly what it's made out of. Um, ox gall, and it's made from the gall of an ox. Yeah, again, very light, a little dirty water. I'm getting a really nice effect in here. Yeah, that's right. Water, yeah. No. Nope. I'm good. The dirty water is what I want right now. Okay. Well, I'll let that cure and let that settle in a little bit. Again, I'm going to go back to adding a little value to where my. very, very, very vibrant and choppy and racing time with the sun. And if you don't have a hair dryer, <laughs> I love that hair dryer. <laughs> it's my best friend. Okay. So I'm going to dry this one now. See how it's got this now? Third layer. Same puddle of water. <laughs> Didn't change any pigment or water ratio. Are you using heat or just air? That's a heat. <laughs> so again, I'm going to dry a little bit more. It's very damp because the paper is thicker, of course. But again, look at that nice granular effect I'm getting. And look yes. at that mist. It's yeah, starting to nice. separate and it's giving me exactly the fog I want without me having to really paint it in there. Would you say this is a mist day? Yes. Mm -hmm. Try to create a fog effect over yeah. the water. So again, I'm going to use blue and the brown. I'm going to add a little more brown. Or sienna, I should say. And I might just add a little orange in it, just warm it up. Cadmium orange. in the watercolor. Who likes using salt? Great, great tree effects, great brush effects. Yep. Use salt in the bottom of my hands. 
I'll show you. I'll do it in the next one. I'll do a little. I'll do it up to my texture. It adds texture. It can add some character. Yeah. All right, we got Parmesan cheese. Oh, you heard me? I'm trying to go low. There was a guy on TV who used to, uh, Jerry on, not Jerry on, one other guy who used to water calls. He used to put so much salt in that, see? Making a salad over here. It's not the guy's name, Gary the Spitz or something like that. He's put so much salt in that. They also use salt. Yeah, Gary the Spitz. The ones where he walks back down. But then he does have ones where he has some shrubs. I'm actually adding more pigment to the rocks because it's not foggy now. This is our foreground. This is a little. Here. It's going to be very simple. Nothing crazy, just a little. So, is that first layer of the brown that you put down, is that still wet? This one? No, 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 the brown. Yes. Um, I added more pigment. Okay. When it's wet, you have to add more pigment to it, otherwise you're just going to get... But the blue that you're putting on top, the brown, is still wet underneath. Yes, see, then you can still see okay. the sheen to it. And you put the green... See, when I touch it, yeah, I have more pigment. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's fuzzy enough, but it's not going... Because I added more pigment. Yeah, it's that pigment water ratio. That's the hardest part to practice, really. When to put it down, when the, if it's too dry, it's going to be dry brush. If it's too wet, it's going to just make a mess. Yeah. And that's a good way of practicing that is from playing with skies, clouds. Yeah. And again, I just use these two colors. I just happen to like the way they work. What color did you just draw? Burnt sienna. This is the uh, Windsor Newton burnt sienna. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, you, some people can make it with a, like a lizard and crimson, and I think they uh, another color that they make their own burnt sienna. Yeah, that's what I want. You like you make it, yeah? The lizard and crimson? Now, back to my cuddle, which I have to make now. Yeah, this is from perspective. So now I'm using what I'm using with this brush. I'm using a synthetic brush with a point, and it's got a lot of spring to it. So it's, it can actually load up the brush with the water. I can spatter it, but I like the fact that I have this nice spring, and I have this nice point, so I can make a nice fine edge at the end. See that? I want to make really tiny edges I can. This is a Lowell, Lowell Cornell brush around. Cheapies. About eight bucks, maybe? Believe me, I have. They're probably even cheaper than that. Depends, yeah. I guess you can get what, wherever you get them. Depends on where you buy them. This is a fortune.
make it look a little more realistic. We're trying to get the fogginess. And as we work forward, we want to make sure that we're coming into perspective. So we're starting to pull through. Again, we're going to So it's wet on dry. But if it was damp, it would really start diffusing like before. So I'm able to delineate what I want with the water here. Do some shadow there. So again, make it very simple. Basically a two-color palette. I just threw a little bit of gold in the yellow one there. Just to give it a little eye, eye uh, appeal so it's not too... I'm going to let this dry and then we'll do the last layer, the last two layers. And then we'll go on to sky and water. Suppose you want to correct something there. Would you dry it, do it before you dry it? If it's something where I put it down and let's say I didn't touch the paper once and I kept going over it like, a, like I was painting the wall, that's going to create a bloom. So I will hit it before it dries. Something that I want to scratch out, I'll dry it first. Okay. So it depends. Now, while this is drying, I'm going to show you another thing I did in fog. If I can find it. And this doesn't do justice on this, but this is glazing. I painted the whole picture. When I was done with the picture, I took French ultramarine, a wash, and I washed the whole thing over. I went over the whole painting with French ultramarine, the wash, to make the fog effect. And it didn't run. Yeah, Everything was dry underneath. It's got to be totally dry before you, before you <coughs> glaze it. A thin layer of the blue over it to get that real dusky, foggy effect. <laughs> That, well, this is uh, uh, a print of the No, that was on a 140 pound. 
Sally, you said you have two two more levels to do. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of the painting, do you have an idea of how many levels you're going to be doing? Sometimes I like to do less is more, but then again, it depends on how I develop the perspective. In this case, we're getting there. I have to make this pop. And in order to make a painting this pop, right now it's all about the same. Yeah, exactly. So we, we need to put at least 10% dark in here. There's an there's a old-fashioned rule of thumb. Uh, usually, like, you know, um, you have uh, 10 to 5 to 10% of your darks. You're going to have probably 20% of your light, and then you're going to have the rest of your medium tones with different values for a value study. Now I can add a little bit more pigment if I want to make it a little darker. I'm still going to keep that gray color. I like it. Sally, let me know. Take a break. Okay. Oh, I'm good. Thanks. And again, perspective, this is going off the page. It's in front of us, it's probably really tall. So I'm not going to stop it down here, it's up front, so it's going to go high. Yeah. yeah, it's about a way of doing perspective. wet, so I'm going over the wet, notice, and that part's wet, I can actually touch it, a little bit more pigment, and it's going to flow where I need it to flow. And over here, it's not as close, and we're going to get that for a minute, so we're going to Sally? Yes. Is this the is this kind of the rate that you always paint at, or are you doing it a little bit faster because it's a it's a demo? Depends on my mood. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Depends on. There are days where I'll sit down and just be like, okay. There are days I'm like, let me just splash it up. Um, I'm in a loose mood. I, sometimes I've done something and I've just I've been loose and it comes out perfect. Right. Sometimes I'm sitting there and I'm trying to get it to look. I'm like, you know what? Overwork, disaster. Right. Right. Take a break. So see, this, this is very wet. I'm going to add a little pigment in that. It wasn't dry enough. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting there. Again, we have to push the paint. I don't want to see people going back and forth over it. When you do that, you're going to create blooms and you're going to make a mess. Put it down, you have too much pigment, add a little water, 
Put it down and practice your brush stroke. Put, use the side of the brush if you have to. Use a flat brush if you need to. Reeds coming up. I could use a skinnier brush if I want. I just want to get that started. <coughs> Again, do it here too. Some grass coming up, sticking out of the water in front of those rocks and the land. or add a little dry brush just to uh, steal in it. But in the meantime, I got perspective. I have a foggy scene. I got mist where I want it, the eyes focusing on that mist. I got the darkness in the foreground pulling at you so you have a perspective with the mist in there. Any, any questions? And would anybody have done anything a little different? Please share. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, I'm Critiques over here, I'll take it. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, I would do it. <laughs> When you get the salt dry, it will. It, it'll, yeah, when it dries, you'll see it. Put this over here to dry for a few minutes. Close up. Okay, we have um, refreshments in the back from the kitchen. Please. You guys
right. This one here, I started out. Um, this one, I'm going to do one of these. What I did to keep that white, it's such a small spot. I already put some mask on. Okay. So I did a little bit of mask only to keep that really white so I can paint my wet around it. I'm going to start out with the sky. My sky, I'm going to start out with some green water. Right down on my horizon line. Again, another simple one. I'm not going to go crazy with too much color or too much detail. Now, I want to make this more like a, uh, a day. So, winter blue, green shade. Who said easy to see winter blue? One green is the <laughs> the reds are more, more purple. The green shade is a little warmer. So what I'm going to do now is... Not confused, right? Down the block. Don't stop there. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, so I'm going to start with the green shade. Green shade is the best. And our perspective of clouds, the farther back you go, the smaller they become. You can raise this. And then it's really crazy. Hey! No, I see. Well, it's not a You get Now, when's the glue is a stainer, so I like to take it off my palette quickly. <sighs> Yellow ochre. Yellow ochre, a lizard and crimson. Cerulean blue. Make skin color and or sand. So we have yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, and cerulean blue. In conjunction, when you mix mix it, it's a little pinkier, a little orangier. And have a nice wet sand color, I can make it. So I'm going to use a local color as an undertone. See that nice sand color it makes? Those three colors. Dry real quick because we don't have a lot of time in this one. 
Oh. All right, so there's my sand. Now I'm going to have my, my blue, but you know what, I'm going to put a little green, you can make a little greenish green. What green do you use? I'll have a hookers. You know what, I only use one green because I usually mix my greens. Yeah. Um, I really don't use a lot. And then also, the burnt sienna, when you add it with the green and the brown, you really get a nice, ocean green. Again. You know, if any of you people in the back want to come up, there's a few sheets up here. Hookers and French. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now you see I'm doing a glaze over that sand, the sandbar. <laughs> <laughs> So now you now you can see the transparency. You can see the brown of the sand, the sand bar coming through. So water on the here. Stay at it. You stay at it. Just wait. Did somebody lose it? next to the lightest light makes a pump. Okay. While that's drying, I'm going to take a little, little okra, a green, a little green dune over here. I'm going to do, I'll salt this one up so you guys can see what the salt is. dropping in. And that, I'll probably put a little salt on that while it's really wet, just to get a little texture. Coming up. It's 
too far away, but it's too wet. It's all right. But what I'm trying to do right now is show you when you layer over how the sandbar pulls through. It's almost called the glazing effect. So I put the water, put this down the, the sand first. And then I put left the white and then put the water over it. So the sandbar is kind of pulling through. It gives you that illusion that you can see the sand through the water. I'm going to give the illusion of 
rocks that kind of fall into the sand a little bit. And again. And seaweed. Kind of the tide pushed it up. Yeah, I think that's true. So. And then down here I use French ultramarine, a little hunger's green, and a 
little burnt sienna to make that sea color green. And I used it translucent. I made it as a glaze. It's called glazing when you go over. So if it's glazing, I did spatter. The salt really didn't take effect on here. I think I need a bigger salt. But uh, no, it's very nice. what I could do is spray that a little bit. I want it to cut out. This is a raffle. Yes. Oh. And what do we do? Well, what? You can do this one too. Put your name on the paper, fold it in half, put it in a bag. Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. Just kind of take out a little bit. Just give it a dollar and a three. Two paintings. A dollar and a three. Dollar and a three. So you can have both of them. So if anybody wants this one, they have this one. Alright guys, let's go to dry. Let's dry. Inspired. 